Lots of people build tribal commander decks, but not all tribes are as equal as others. So I want to take some time to highlight some of the lesser played tribes, why they struggle in commander, and some ways you can make them a little bit better. Now when I say tribal, I'm talking about decks that have a commander with a type that all or most of the creatures in the deck also share. We're also generally looking to avoid running too many changelings, as that kind of defeats the purpose of a tribal deck. So far we've looked at tribes that aren't popular, but still have a decent showing of several hundred decks on EDH rec. Today we dive deep down that list though, and have a look at Centaur Tribal. A tribe with plenty of members, several legendaries, and some solid themes. But at only 30 decks and ranked 101st on EDH rec, we need to ask the question, is Tribal Centaurs playable? Now I approach this discussion as someone who has a Tribal Centaur deck. It's a project I've played and worked with for several years. So I have a bit of bias in how playable this tribe is already but I'm going to work through them like I have with the other tribes I've covered and come back to my personal experiences later. Centaurs are primarily found in white, red, and green, along with two black zombie centaurs as well. They are mostly found on the plains of Dominaria, Theros, and Ravnica, and normally show up in sets on those plains. The first centaur was Windseeker Centaur, who was only ever printed as a book promo way back in 1994, while the latest are some of the new Eternal Legal Centaurs from Unfinity. With 67 members, the tribe has support for a number of themes, such as tokens, plus one plus one counters, and life gain. Looking at the commanders, we have four legendary centaurs that could work. These are Carador, Ghost Chieftain, Nikia of the Old Ways, Stonebrow, Crows and Hero, and Seton, Crows and Protector. This immediately highlights a problem though. As we said before, centaurs are mainly across white, red, and green, and our choices of commander are either red green, white green black, or mono green which will cut down the size of the tribe that we have access to. And looking at them, we can see that Seton is actually a druid tribal commander, and a really good one at that, but not really great for centaurs. Looking at our other three option, we have Carador, who was a powerful commander, and was once even CDH playable. But nowadays, with improved versions like Maldrotha, he doesn't carry the same scare factor. Nikia would lock us into mainly the all-creature strategy, which might be viable depending on what we have access to, and Stonebrow cares about Trample. So for once, we don't actually need to look outside the tribe for alternative commanders. We already have some good choices here. For consistency though, I will give a mention for Girid, Conclave Exile, who I'm still annoyed with Wizards for printing as a human that makes Rhino tokens, as his abilities would feed really well into the themes that the tribe has. Nevertheless, he is a solid choice if you want access to all the colors of the tribe and a commander that supports themes the tribe wants to do. So all three of our commander centaurs could be viable, but all are pretty reliant on the quality of the creatures that are available. So let's look at the creature base. We can see that most of the centaurs are in the three and four mana range, with several more at the two and five mana ranges. This is a pretty good mana curve and means we have a good selection for early and mid game. But in the late game, there may be a bit of a problem. With Stonehoof Chieftain at eight mana, we have a really good beta to drop in. And then we don't have much else. Centaurs seem to really specialize in mid-sized creatures, with small pump effects, lots of 3-3 three, three for 3s, and have abilities that slowly give them small individual buffs or protection. We also have a huge pile of centaurs that are really only good for draft, none of which are really any good in a format like Commander. We do, however, have a centaur lord with Pharos Band Warchief, who gives plus one plus one and trample to all our other centaurs. It's not huge, but having a lord is always a good sign for the tribe. There are some solid themes to these creatures, with plus one plus one counters being the most obvious, but unfortunately the centaurs don't really have a way to create the counters themselves, with abilities like Heroic that requires targeted spells, or they are payoff cards like Chronicler of Heroes or Conclave Mentor. But we can't just look at the typed creatures for this tribe, because there are a lot of cards that actually make centaur tokens. Call of the Conclave, Faded Intervention, Centaur's Herald, and Courses Accord for some one-off effects, and Vitu Ghazi Guild Mage, Centaur Glade, and Ferris Band Raiders for some repeatable effects. These are some great ways to help fill out our creatures, but there isn't a lot of value here, since you're often overpaying for the effect, three or four mana just to create a three three with no special abilities. While this may work good with something like Populate, there's just better tokens you can be copying in Commander than a simple three three. Along with this list, I also have to mention one of my favorite cards from this tribe, which is Rampage of the Clans. Since why should you be the only one with three threes? Everyone should be able to enjoy the power of this tribe. So far looking at this tribe, they seem all right. We have a decent amount of creatures with some mixed abilities that aren't the best, and we have some strong commanders that they could be paired with. So it's time to talk about my experience with playing them. 
With most centaurs being 3, 4 or 5 mana, they are much harder to get into play on mass than something like an elf deck does, as you can only generally play one per turn until the mid to late game. While there are a lot of centaur token generators, centaur tokens are also just 3 threes, and most of the time they cost 3 mana to actually make, and again, that makes them quite difficult to mass. So you can build a really ramp heavy deck to get up to the 7 to 8 mana by turn 5 that you need for all your work, but then your payoff for doing all that is two 3-3s three instead of just one. Now, in the past tribes we've looked at, the creatures have also sucked at times. Look at crabs, for example. They also have a lot of basic creatures. But you can use the commanders to turn those weird stats into something useful. But our centaur commanders? They just don't. Carador wants value creatures that can be bought back over and over. Things with enter the battlefield effects or death triggers. But Centaurs don't have those sort of abilities. Stonebrow gives buffs to the team if they have Trample, but only 11 of our Centaurs actually have Trample. Nikia lets you play lots of creatures, at the cost of not being able to play non-creature spells, which means you are completely reliant on the quality of your creatures, and as we've said, the quality just isn't there. Centaurs sit in this really awkward place, where they are just expensive enough that it's hard to play multiple in a single turn, but not powerful enough individually to be a threat. With commanders that also don't care about the tribe, they just end up with no identity and are very hard to actually build. But I obviously do play this tribe, so how do I make it work for me? Well, just like with the crabs, if you can't make the tribe work, just build a Voltron deck and fill the rest of it with centaurs, of course. I found that Stonebrow is actually the best choice for the tribe, with lots of ways to reduce the cost of your centaurs, with cards like Urza's Incubator and Emerald Medallion, and then effects that share Trample around like Garrick's Uprising and Ferocity of the Wilds. This way you can get your centaurs out on mass a little bit easier, then use Stonebrow's pump effect to turn those 3-3s into much more deadly 5-5s. Obviously though, even 5-5s aren't that great in Commander, so we just run our Voltron type build with big pump effects like Tribal Unity, Finale of Devastation, and Exponential Growth. Combined with a pretty strong ramp package, it means you can play out most of your centaurs, but have a few combat kills with your commander if it just stays on the field for a while. There are some other cool tribal cards we have access to in these colours, with Descendant's Path, Steely Resolve, and Alpha Status. And I also have to recommend Elemental Bond for Centaur Tribal as well, since most of the good centaurs will all have 3 power or more. Elemental Bond also works well with any of the token generators if you decide to go down that route. There are also all the good colourless tribal cards, with my choices being Harold's Horn and Urza's Incubator for the cost reduction, and Vanquish's Banner for card draw. But in general, you are just building a red-green mid-range combat deck, so you just end up building in that direction rather than actually trying to do the tribal things. So how does this tribe end up rating? Well, I knew this going into the video, but they're just not a very good tribe. There are synergies in the creatures, and the commanders can be strong, but nothing just fits together how it needs to to make it a good tribal deck in Commander. Carador, Stonebrow, and Nikia all want a deck full of powerful creatures, and the tribe just doesn't support that sort of build. There's just so much draft chaff through the creatures, and only one really powerful chieftain at the top. Overall, I have to rate them as a bad tribe, which kind of explains why they are so underplayed on EDA Trek. But there is hope. What they really seem to lack is a good commander, but not necessarily a strong commander. A legendary centaur that actually cares about something like plus one plus one counters or populating tokens. They just need some sort of way to easily pump out those 3-3s three and actually set up a board state. As a combat focused tribe, there will never truly be a strong tribe in commander, when compared to things like dragons or other big creature tribal, but certainly make them much easier to function than they are currently. Obviously, they just need more members that actually do something by themselves when on the battlefield, either by sharing abilities or giving you some synergy for playing more centaurs. A few less vanilla 3-3s, and a few more with actually relevant stuff on them. And that'll do for this tribe, and the first run of this series about bad tribes. Expect to see another deck tech video in the future while I dig around some of the other tribes you guys have been suggesting. There have been some really odd ones out there that are really worth the discussion once I started looking at them. The channel has also doubled in size over the past month, and it's been great seeing all the feedback. So thanks to everyone that's come along and given this and the other videos a view and maybe a comment, I really do appreciate it. Until next time, thanks for watching.